right, I'm not gonna lie. I'm wearing the same thing as I wore yesterday because I decided to record one video ahead so that I could publish them in the morning so people could get them in the morning and then go enjoy them through the day rather than having me publish these later on in the day. So even though this is gonna come out on Saturday, we're recording it on Friday and I'm not yucky and wearing the same shirt two days in a row. All right, so today our two things are going to be ISO, which is the third part of the exposure triangle. And then we're also going to talk about reflections. So ISO is the setting on your camera that controls how sensitive your sensor in there is. It's gonna control how quickly your sensor gathers up light. And the problem with higher ISOs is that it starts to have a negative impact on your, your image. So when you turn your ISO up and you make your sensor more aggressive, when it's working to grab light faster, you start to get a graininess in the picture. And it's, it's most people just call it noise. It's like uh, almost like the white noise that you would get on an old television set that wasn't tuning in a, a TV station. Now, it doesn't always start out that bad. And the nice thing about it is you can always turn your ISO up a bit before it starts to look nasty. And there are software solutions to try to, to kind of mitigate some of that noise. And you can, you can do noise reduction in different software. Um, I would recommend that in, in some cameras you have noise reduction built right into the camera. I will be talking about doing photo editing in software uh, as we go along in this whole little journey. And I highly recommend using a software program after you've captured your image to do your noise reduction because you want to apply noise reduction only to the parts of your image that need it. When you apply noise reduction to everything, it will do things like wipe out pores on skin and it will make people look like a mannequin or a Barbie doll. It does a very, um, it's kind of like a heavy handed approach to handling something that needs to be done with a lot of finesse. And a couple days down the road, I will show you the tool of, of how to go in and do that with finesse so that you're not in wrecking skin, that's a big thing. So the, the areas of your photo that are gonna be most impacted by ISO, like high ISO noise, is actually in the darker parts of your photo, in the shadowy areas. So if you take a photo of, let's say, a landscape image and you have a mountain in the sky and a river and whatnot, but then there are like areas underneath trees where it's totally shady, um, those areas in that shade, I would look, you know, kind of zoom in either on your camera or on your computer afterwards and look at what's going on in those shadows. And if it starts to get very digitally pixelated and, and, and not good looking and not sh sharp and clear, that is digital noise. And so you want to kind of identify for your camera where the line should be drawn on, on where you want to cut off your limit for your ISO setting. So most cameras will allow you to go really high with ISO, much higher than they can actually do competently. Uh, one of the advertising widgets that, that camera companies love to advertise is their super high ISO number. The problem is it realistically isn't good above you know, some other number. So, and I have two main camera bodies. I have two Sonys. I have an A9 and an A7R4. And those are two fantastic camera bodies, uh, two top of their, their line. Um, and the A9 does fine with ISOs up to 10,000 for sure. And if I need to push it to 12,800, I, I can do that. You can see the noise, but I still have a usable image. On the A7R4, which is a high resolution camera, it's not really a low light camera, I run into to ISO problems much lower. I don't like to go much above maybe 6,000 on my ISO on here, maybe 8,000 in a pinch. So it's, it's dramatically different. So your job today is to find out where that line should be that you don't wanna cross. Um, when I mentioned a couple days ago about automatic having some, some really bad, uh, you know, the full auto mode will send your ISO into the, the, the sky. It will turn your ISO way up. And the problem with that is then you're, you're having uh, an image quality problem. Um, now more sophisticated camera bodies, you can actually go in and set a little instruction in there saying in auto modes, don't go above X. And, and I have set that both in mine. 
Um, some other cameras can't do that. So it's just gonna depend on your, your camera model. Um, so when you have control of, if you go to the manual, the M setting on your, on your camera, that M setting will um, give you control of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Even when you're in that setting, you can usually go into your ISO control and turn ISO on auto. So what you're doing is you're controlling your shutter speed and your aperture, and then your camera's going back in and adjusting your ISO separately to make that the settings that you put in there work. Pretty good solution for some neat things. Um, it, it, it also, you can use aperture priority with auto ISO and, or shutter priority with auto ISO, and then it's taking a shutter priority, the camera takes over your aperture, and aperture priority, it takes over shutter speed. So, so those priority modes basically um, give you some, some, some control without total. Um, and at this point, once you have all three of those sides of the triangle under your command, you pick what is most important for the picture that you're gonna take. So if you want pictures of a bird in flight, I mentioned that one yesterday with shutter speed, then the main thing about that is gonna be to have shutter speed that can stop the action. Or if you're taking kids playing out in the field and they're running and you wanna make sure that they're sharp and crisp and they stop the running kids, you might want a shutter speed of maybe one one thousandth or, or something along those lines to freeze that action. So if you're aiming for that shutter speed, maybe shutter priority is what you want. Flip side of that, if you're looking for that creamy background, that background that gets blurred out behind a portrait, that's called bokeh, and you create that by having a wide open aperture, you wanna flip over to aperture priority. And so, or you can just go full manual and control the whole thing. People that are really techy and like the control, like futzing with their controls, generally love to shoot in manual. I spent probably close to a decade never shooting out of manual. Um, just in the last year or so, I've, I've moved on to, to shooting in manual, uh, to aperture and shutter priority a lot more. All right, uh, that's it for the ISO setting. The other thing that we are talking about today is reflections. So it's been a little bit rainy in my area. Um, one of the things that is super cool and immediately creates some symmetry in your image, which is a good compositional element, is to find a reflection of a thing. And you can find reflections in, in mud puddles or in pools or in natural bodies of water or mirrors or, I mean, you name it. Reflections are all over the place. And if you start looking for them, um, I do a lot of piano recitals and I love playing with the reflection of the, the person in the, the lid of a grand piano and you can see their reflection and sometimes you see their expression better in that than you do from their the frontal picture of their face and you kind of get a double exposure of their face by doing that. I, I do that all the time when I'm shooting classical pianists. Um, so, you know, find reflections in your environment and start exploring with creating neat looks. Uh, wedding photographers love to have a bride near a mirror and then you get the picture of maybe like a profile of the bride but then you have them kind of looking at the lens in the mirror um, or when you're working with a couple, you have that same sort of a dynamic where there's a reflective surface and you kind of have an additional uh, way of, of composing just using that reflection. Real fun thing to play with with photography and reflections are everywhere. Um, one little tidbit about working with reflections, there is always the chance of getting yourself in a reflective surface. And as a general rule, you don't want to have the picture of the photographer in there trying to take a picture. So. Think of reflections a lot like a billiard ball banking off of a bumper on a pool table. So if you bump it at a 90 degree angle, it's gonna reflect right back into the lens and you're gonna see yourself or you're gonna see your flash or whatever thing that you're, that, you're, that you're dealing with. If you get off axis, if you shoot from maybe above and at an angle or, or not at an angle, you know, just change your angle a little bit, and bounce that off so that it doesn't hit your lens, you can avoid getting unintentional reflections onto your lens. So that's another little tool, tool tip to throw into the, into the mix. So that's it for today. Have a great time creating and stay healthy and well and, and isolated and, and be good uh, to each other and to your neighborhood businesses. And, and I hope you have a great day.